this is Kaipacha with the weekly paleo report and I'm trying to I got a couple reasons to get here so early it's uh, I just got out of bed it's not even seven o'clock but a couple of things number one is I'm off to the Envision festival today it's actually Tuesday I'll try to get this up before I go I usually do the report on Wednesday but the other thing is these darn cicadas I don't know if you've noticed in the last few reports, but when I'm down by the river or even up at the house, when the sun gets up just high enough, bam, all the cicadas start singing so loud that you can't hear a doggone thing. <laughs> so I'm beating the cicadas this morning for the Bailey Report. Oh my God. Okay, so anyway, to the astrology by golly that's never stopping now is it no sooner do we get done with the eclipses than we got other stuff going on today this very well actually tomorrow <laughs> Venus conjunct Neptune but she's there today it's just exact tomorrow yeah I mean we've got this whole gathering going on right you know we've got the Sun Mercury Venus Neptune and Chiron all in Pisces. It's that time of year, folks. It's a Pisces party. And the only challenge that I'm going to be talking about today in the report quite extensively is Mars. Mars is up there in Sagittarius. Square, square, square. The exact square to Venus is on Sunday. Yeah? And on that, and on that same day, Mercury is exactly conjunct Neptune. And on that same day, the moon has gone around and is in a beautiful trine to the sun and opposite Saturn. If you look at the chart just before, uh, you know, the, uh, the report there, you, you will see it is for the square moon. So the moon is in Taurus right now and Thursday, she goes into Gemini and finally by Friday she moves up in Gemini to what oppose Mars right square the Sun and square all of that Pisces party over there going on you know and and then she moves on uh, into Cancer on Saturday and finally coming around on Monday to Leo and next week we're going to see that, you know, Mercury is, uh, well, Mars comes around to square Mercury next Wednesday. That'll probably be in, uh, you know, the next report. But for now, I'm going to just run back to the house. This is just a little path across the street from my house. But, I, you know, I got to pack up and hit the road. So I um, just thought I'd come out and give you some green. <laughs> and get back into like, what is the scoop with Pisces? Okay, good morning. <laughs> Don't know if it's morning where you are, but it's morning here. Um, I gotta get right down to it, gotta pack up and get out of here. So, Pisces, let's look at Pisces, the 12th sign of the zodiac. And finish close complete but it rules the collective unconscious which is the infinite potential and infinite possibility out of which everything comes so it's the Alpha and the Omega the beginning and the end both the innocent and the open and the pure and then at the end it's the you know it's the time to let go and release and return you know having you know either completed the job or not but it's over it's done so there's also this process of releasing and surrendering that we have to do with Pisces the 12th house in Pisces is associated with the collective unconscious the collective unconscious, you know, kind of brought up, you know, initially by Jung, is the storehouse of everything that people avoid and deny and escape and just kind of suppress. And, you know, it's just like, 
Pisces actually rules garbage men and sewage workers and things like that. You know, it's just like really this place where um, we're not we're, we're not all there. We're not all awake. We're not all in it. It's like the cellar. Okay, you know, when I do chart readings and things, if you were born with planets in the 12th house, you know, it's your very inner, inner, inner world that you are sometimes, well, mostly unconscious of because it's just been really kind of put down, put away. And it's also what? The collective unconscious. This is movies. Okay, this is this is fashion. This is like fads. This is like what is going living within the minds, hearts, and souls, or the unconscious of everybody. So it's also you know I, I like I think I've said before you know more presidents of the United States were you know have the sun in the twelfth house than any other house, and I'm sure that a lot of movie stars. Okay, that are the icons, that are the symbols, that are, you know, just kind of expressing what everybody longs for or wants or, you know, desires or whatever. But, you know, it's just living. It's the, it's the screen. It's the movie screen. So it's all of our fantasies and it's our imagination. It's heaven, you know. It's just, so it's like we, it's, it's this place where we are all one. There's no separation. There's no boundaries. It's all love. It's union. It's mysticism. It's yoga. So this is all, you know, this this space where the 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 spectrum just goes off the charts in both directions. It's the Messiah, the highest, and it's the drug addict pushing the shopping cart because that's all they've got. You know that you know that there's the thing where. In so many ways, there's no self. It's not a place of self-consciousness, of ego-consciousness. And this can be good or bad, right? This can be that you've either transcended your ego, <laughs> okay, or you are like innocent and childish and just not aware of what your ego is doing. <laughs> So sometimes it can be pretty hard to connect to these people and kind of wake them up to what is happening. And this is exactly what can be happening now on a collective level with so many of us because Mars in Sagittarius, okay, fire planet in a fire sign about expansion teaching, traveling, going, expanding in my, you know, my right brain into, you know, all these higher realms of consciousness, you know, and it's like charge and go and then you've, and it's squaring this Venus over here in Pisces, which is like, yeah, let's go to the outer, 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 outer limits, <laughs> you know, I mean, um, that's why my mantra today is like, reach for the stars, you know, it's like, go as far as you can go, <laughs> this is over expansion. This is where we can lose consciousness or lose our connection to our bodies, to our, to our real um, purpose, to our left brain communication, to our other people uh, around us where we are like spiraling up and spiraling out and we're on our own trip. <laughs> yeah. To where we're not aware so much of our surroundings. We're not aware of our impact on other people, okay? And maybe other people can't really even, like, knock on our door or talk to us or bring us down because we don't want to come down. This is like up, up, out, and away. <laughs> so the mantra today has to do with bringing it back down, right? It's great to go up. It's great to go out. It's great to go on a trip or a journey, yeah, and bring it all back. This is what artists do, right? They take their imagination and what they've seen or heard within or, you know, felt deeply down, and they bring it up and they bring it down and they bring it out. This is, this is you know, this is the, the next step, yeah, that we, you know, in that, in that process of unification 
is not to be doing it, you know, just escaping and denying and avoiding our realities, but like really coming in, coming in. And this is where the relationships come in because Jupiter's in Scorpio. It still is in Scorpio. And so there's a couple of things I wanted to read to you today. One of them is that really from January 27th to March 18th, okay, Mars is in Sagittarius, and with Mars in Sagittarius and Jupiter in Scorpio, we have what's called a mutual reception. Mars rules Scorpio, Jupiter rules Sagittarius, so they are in each other's signs. And I just love the book by Anne Ryan. Anne Ryan, yeah. Planets in Mutual Reception. There's a picture of her. It's a very old book. I've been doing this a long time. I don't know if it's still in print or not, but she's outrageous, man. <laughs> Here's the, here is the, um, well, first, I want to not just, well, let's do the mutual reception, okay? It's Mars-Jupiter. Mars-Jupiter. The tests, mutual receptions deal with tests. <clears throat> They deal with the improper use of physical energy due to poor judgment or over-expansion. Through the exaggeration of his abilities, the native may become overly arrogant or aggressive, especially in sexual matters. A lack of awareness in methods of self-projection and an overly aggressive personality can cause others to feel uncomfortable in the native's presence. There may also be problems due to the native's inclination to promise more than he can deliver. Lack of honesty, inability to follow through, and poor judgment in financial matters can cause difficulties with police officers, higher courts, and in-laws. <laughs> I love it, man. Extended self-indulgence in food and drink can cause health problems, particularly with the liver. You know, Jupiter rules the liver. Due to the lazy nature of the trine, an attitude of, I know I can do it, so why bother, often prevails until these energies have been, um, are properly balanced. Once this balancing has been accomplished, there will be opportunities for higher education, foreign travel, and religious growth through self-mastery. I find it very interesting that the guy is coming around to collect the garbage. <laughs> wow. Just as I was talking about the 12th house Pisces and the garbage man. Anyway, okay, I need to go have some orange juice. I want to wrap this sucker up. I think you can see, I mean, I like to read some of the things that it's, uh, it's easier for me to, you know, I don't want to be pointing out or have people say, oh, you know, you know, Kaipachi got down on, you know, these people today. <laughs> if you read it from a book, it's a little more objective. But you get this idea, too much, too many drugs. Okay, too much escapism, too much denial, too much arrogance, too much self-indulgence, too much like, I am the greatest, I am the teacher, I am the guru, I know it all, I, I, me, me, blah, 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 blah. This can just like get to the point of, <laughs> you know, people can't talk to you, people can't relate to you, people can't. So, you know, the mastery comes, and this is what Jupiter and Scorpio is about, self-mastery. It's having boundaries, having limits. I know that I've done enough or that I am like, you know, overextending into your space, into your world, 
okay, not listening or not paying attention to those others around me. Scorpio is other people's values and other people's money and other people's power and other people's sexuality. So this can be where we can just like, you know, we just, you know, we want to get off. We want our orgasm and we're just going to like, you know, jump on it and go for it and, you know, have our way, have my, you know, it's, it's, this can just like be a place where we're not aware. It's unconscious. And whenever we're not aware and it's unconscious, something else, police officers, <laughs> Mother Nature, our closest intimate partners, the banks or whatever, the government, you know, the military, comes in and phew, then we have external limitations, external boundaries, and we end up behind bars or something. So, you know, uh, you know you know, that if you're having, you know, uh, you know, issues or trouble or like people are, you know, coming at you or, you know, you're, you know, you're getting pulled over or something like that or whatever, you know, it's, it's a, it's a reminder that, you know, we each need to like become more aware of our own, like what we're doing. <laughs> we have to wake up from the dream. We have to wake up from the innocence. We have to wake up from the unconsciousness and not drop the ball. And that brings me to the mantra for today, yeah? And that is, Phew. I reach for the stars so high up above and take the universe in. Beautiful. Imagination, medicine, however you want to look at it, meditation. We, we, go, we go up and we go out and we take it all in. And we see it from the eagle eye and we see it from that higher perspective not losing myself or dropping the ball I return and share all I've seen it's the coming down <laughs> and if you've ever done a good acid trip or something you know going up is fine and then the next couple days coming down is kind of like oh my god <laughs> so this coming down it's like what we, we it's like breathing out and breathing in right so we can breathe in and take it all in but then we want to breathe it out, we want to share it, we want to give it, we want to create with it. We don't want to get lost out in the stars or the universe and do unconscious things that, you know, injure other people or abuse other people or abandon other people because we're lost in our own trip and our own journey. We, got, we want to just like, you know, kind of do this thing where we're always checking in, checking out, checking in, checking out, breathing in, breathing out. And not, you know, not getting too much in and, and then again, not getting too much out. That's what the mastery is about. And that's what can happen, you know, during this time period with this, you know, the Mars, Jupiter. It's, it's not over now. Like I said, it goes on until March 18th. But it's really strong now with the Mars square Venus, Mars coming up to square Mercury. It's like, whoosh, yeah. So just a little something for you to contemplate these days. <laughs> as you go off and play your music and have some fun and chill out and get lazy and <laughs> sleep too long, which is, it's all good. Just come back to us, come back to your, come back to each other, come back to the world with the wonderful gifts you've discovered. Namaste, aloha, so much love.